explain a little bit more about how and why I wrote it um, once we've told it. But this is Shelley the Leatherback Turtle and in here is a very glamorous prop. You'll find it just incredibly beautiful. <laughs> it's a plastic bag called Russell and he's called Russell because he makes a rustling noise. Is that my surname? <laughs> Can you hear that? He makes a rustling noise, that's why it's called Russell. Alright, and here's how the story goes. I'll get some people to join in. Okay. Good night. Not that far away, and not that long ago, there was once a plastic bag called Russell who longed to be useful. That's all Russell wanted, was just to be useful. And he dreamed of helping a family take their shopping home without having anything spill. That was going to be his job. Well, Russell was made in an enormous factory with thousands and thousands and thousands of other plastic bags and other plastic things. And he was sitting in a big pile. He was all nice and shiny and new in that part of the story. And there was lots and lots and lots of plastic bags piled up and bundled up in bundles, sitting in a factory, ready to be taken to the supermarket. Finally, the day came when it was his time to go to the supermarket. And a little forklift truck came and lifted them all up. And put them in the back of the truck. And then the truck drove to the supermarket. And you can help with the sound effects. Ready? Another forklift unloaded all those, all those plastic bags. Well done. And then, <laughs> exactly. And then the plastic bags were taken in, in batches inside to be used. And finally, it was Russell's turn. It was Russell's turn to go on the hooks near the checkout. And he was just so excited. He couldn't wait. And there he was, waiting for the family to fill him up with all his shopping. And what kind of things do you think that family might have bought? Yes. Milk. Um, yep. yep. So think of an idea and then put your hand up. Yep. He put his milk. Yes. Soda water. Maybe some soda water. Yes. The turtle. I don't think you can buy a turtle in a supermarket. A we're just in a supermarket. Oh, okay. No, we're in a food supermarket. But he could, if they were in a toy supermarket, they could have bought. Sorry, I didn't say. But we're in a food supermarket. Yes. Um, think of an idea and then put yes. your hand up. Juice? Yep. And ice cream? Yes. Berries? Berries, yes. Chocolate? Berries. Chocolate, yes. More chocolate? Yes. Bananas? Bananas. We just two more? Yes. More chocolate? Yes. Red. Red. And chocolate. Oh. Think of an idea and then put your hand up. Yes. Apples. Okay. And all those things that you didn't get a chance to say, but we're thinking, were put in all the other plastic bags. Also, they were put in a trolley, and the trolley had a wonky sort of a wheel that sounded like this. Ready? They loaded the shopping into the car and drove home. Next, when they arrived home, they unloaded all the shopping. All those things that you were thinking. Now, just for about three seconds, we're going to call out all those things that the family bought in the shopping. Ready? Go! Yes, and all the things you didn't have a chance to say were all unloaded. Now, this family, they cared about the environment, and so they wanted to do the best they could. So, they took this biodegradable bag and they folded it up and they put it in the drawer so they could use it again and again and again. Oh, and they put it in the drawer, they kept on using it until one day there was such a big hole in the bottom of Russell, they said, oh, this plastic bag is not even any use to wrap doggy doo in anymore. So they put him in the bin. But they didn't put any kind of a knot in it. Now, until I researched for this story, I didn't know that it can be a good idea that if you have to use a plastic bag and then you have to put it in the bin, well, that's the best place for it when it's finished, it's a good idea. It just helps a little bit if you put a knot in it. And this story should explain why. By the end, you should understand why. Okay, hands down, not now. So, here he is in the bottom of the bin. And soon, poor Russell got covered up with all sorts of smelly things because this family 
They didn't actually have a compost and they didn't have any chicken, so they had to put all the smelly things in the bin. So we're thinking about the red bin, not the recycling bin. Okay? So what kind of stinky things might they have put in the... Do you have a red leather bin for your rubbish? Green. It's green for the rubbish? Yeah. yeah. That's confusing. Yeah. Everywhere else, the green stuff's for the waste. Okay, so I've just confused you. So the rubbish bin that's got the green lead, dark green. Okay, cool. So the rubbish bin is what I mean. What kind of things might have gone on top of it? Maybe a banana peel. And let's think of some really stinky things as well. Yes. Oh, rotten eggs are really woofy. Yes. Oh, um, the fish that's only got bones on it. Oh, yes. Stinky fish bones would be very, very, very woofy. Oh, yes. Blue cheese is very smelly. Um, put your hand down if I already asked you before. Yes. Ooh, maybe some doggy poo that's been brushed up. Or maybe, maybe they've got a baby in the house and there's pooey nappy. And sometimes what you can actually do is you can plop the poo into the toilet and flush it before you put it in the bin so it's not quite so bad. And they didn't do that. They just put it all in there with the poo. We're getting up to a pretty stinky place. I don't think we need any more smelly things. So let's just hear one last one. But no one who's calling out. Vegemite, and it's all mouldy. All right, so Vegemite and all the things that you're thinking that you didn't have a chance to put in. So there was Russell at the bottom of the bin, feeling very, very sad, being covered with all that smelly, yucky, pooey stuff. When at last it was bin day, and the truck, the rattly old garbage truck, came to take the rubbish away, and so the machine came down and picked up all the rubbish. I'm not sure how you make that sound effect, actually. You can help me with it. Beep, 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 That's it. Beep, 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 beep. And then also went to the tip. Ready? Yeah. And Russell came in the back with it. Right to the tip. And then the truck tipped up like that, didn't it? And took all of the rubbish. Came pouring out and out and out and on the ground. But luckily for Russell, instead of landing on the bottom, he landed on the top of all that rubbish. Not only that, but it was breezy that day. And a breeze started to tickle Russell. And Russell started to do a little bit of a dance. And then the wind started to go a little bit stronger and a little bit stronger until he started to fly. And the air filled him up until his handles were hanging down. And he felt a song coming on it went. I believe I can fly. <laughs> I believe I can touch the sky. I think about it every time the wind blows. I flap my handles and fly away. And he was just having such a wonderful time flying and dancing. And he nearly got caught in a tree branch, but then he kept flying over when all of a sudden the wind dropped. And Russell landed in a gutter. Oh no, thought Russell. I thought I was free. Now I'm in the gutter again and look where I've landed. It's not a nice clean gutter. It's a dirty gutter where people put all their rubbish. And there was chip packets, lolly wrappers, cigarette butts, all sorts of popper straws. And also those wrappers that come on the popper straws. They're like little, little wings that just fly off in the air. And there he was, feeling very, very miserable. All those things. But luckily, eventually, in March, it began to rain. It rained, and it rained, and it rained, and it rained until the water began rushing down the drain and along the gutter. And so Russell got washed along and along and along the gutter with all that water. And from the gutter, he got washed into a drain. And from through the drain, he got washed into a stormwater pipe. And from the stormwater pipe, he got washed into a creek. And from the creek, he got washed into a little river. And from the river, he got washed into a bigger river. And from that river, he got washed into the sea. And as, and as he was swimming in the sea, well, he was going out with all the other plastic rubbish. The chip packets, lolly wrappers, Popper straws and all those cigarette butts and things all floating out to sea with Russell. 
And also the plastic lids on the coffee cups that people get, they're all floating out to sea. But as he got further and further out to sea, Russell began to feel really good again. It was kind of like flying. And plus he was being washed clean of all those smelly things that he'd been near in the gutter and then in the tip and in the, in the bin. And it happened that the water started to fill him up. And he started to look quite fat. And, and he started to look a bit like a jellyfish. And he felt another song coming on. It went like this. I like to be under the sea in a jellyfish's garden in the shade. I like to be under the sea in a jellyfish's garden in the shade. And he was having such a great time. And with his handles hanging down and looking so fat, he looked so much like a jellyfish that a big group of jellyfish came swimming over next to Russell and they said, Can you say that? Would you like to swim with us? Would you like to swim with us? And Russell said, I'd love to. And so Russell got to swim with all the jellyfish. Oh, and life couldn't have been much better for Russell. He had friends, he was clean, the sea was so beautiful. But then, Along came. Not a shark, a turtle. Russell, the leatherback turtle. Now I'll put Russell down a little bit while I introduce Shelley and explain a little bit about Shelley. She has a big shell, you see, that's why she's called Shelley. And Shelley, the leatherback turtle, had just turned 33, which meant that she was old enough to have her first eggs. And she had swum all the way from Australia. Oh my goodness, this is going to stretch my geography to Fiji. Oh. I should have looked before. Anyway, somewhere out there. Uh, she swam, she swam, and she swam. Until she got all the way out to Fiji, which is a very, very far, far way. When you haven't got glasses, I think it's over there. Yes, it is. And she swam all that way. Then she laid all her eggs. That is very long. Then she swam all the way back. And that whole journey, she didn't have anything to eat. I tell you what, when I gave birth, I wanted to eat straight away. I didn't want to swim back to Fiji afterwards. So she was very, very hungry. Now, a leatherback turtle's favourite food, her second favourite food is seaweed. The first favourite food is jellyfish. So when she saw those jellyfish swimming around in the sea, singing their favourite song, and she saw Russell, she thought, oh, that is the juiciest, fattest, yummiest jellyfish that I have ever seen. I'm going to eat that one. And this is where I need one person to help me up here to do Russell. So I'm going to pick this up. Yeah. So what's your name? Eva. So Eva, you're going to hold Russell. And we're going to do it a little bit like a, a bullfight where... Shelly's going to try and eat you and you're going to you're going to get away and you're going to run to the other side. And then we're going to do it again. But on the third time, you're going to let Shelly catch you and swallow you. Okay, and I'll help you through it that way. Is that okay? Alright, so I'm going to start over here. You're going to flap your wings and you go up and across. Okay, so Shelly went, yum, 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 I'm going to eat that jellyfish. Um, 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 um. But Shelly, Russell said, no, 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 don't eat me, don't eat me. Oh. Shelly was really hungry. She nibbled some of the tentacles off some of the other jellyfish. She got some of those. Nom, nom, nom. But she decided she really wanted this one, so she tried again. <gasps> oh, but she missed. But the third time, Russell was so frightened he couldn't flap his handles fast enough, and she got him. <laughs> so can you hold Shelly Eva and Russell like that? Wow. Do you think that when Shelly ate Russell, she felt good? No. no, she did and she felt terrible. How would we feel if we ate plastic and got it in our stomach? Oh, it'd be awful. Now, a couple of things happen. Not only does it feel awful to have plastic in your tummy, your food can't go past the plastic very well, so you can't, your food can't go down and out and, and so you start to starve. But also the air that always builds up in our tummy all day, we have some come out this way and some comes out that way. That's just normal. Well, it gets stuck when there's a plastic bag there. And that happened to Shelly. And so all the air in her tummy got bigger and bigger and it gave her a terrible bellyache. It really hurt. 
So she was sick and she was starving, and it also meant that she couldn't dive down deep to eat the seaweed that she loved to eat, or to catch the food that lived down underneath the water. So when she tried to dive down, she just couldn't. Eva, can you show her trying to swim, but she can't quite make it down? That's, that's it, she just couldn't. So she had to float on the surface of the water. And slowly she gave up and she just began to float on the top of the water, getting sicker and sicker. She grew barnacles on her back. And barnacles are okay for ships and for whales and certain creatures, but not good for turtles because they usually live under the water. They don't usually grow barnacles. And so she got so sick, we'll talk about that later, when she got so sick that she washed up on the beach. We'll make this the beach. She washed up on the beach there. Yeah. And Eva, if you can just stay, stay with us for a minute and you can just, yep, that's great. So there she was on the beach feeling extremely sick and really nearly dead. She was starving. And not only that, now Shelley was starting to get sunburned because the sun was beating down. It was summer. And really, the only time that turtles come up onto the sand on the beach is to lay eggs in the night. They don't like to be on the beach in the middle of the day. They get too sunburned. Well, it just so happened that a brother and a sister were walking along, a big grown-up sister and a younger brother were walking along the beach when they came across her. So who could be the brother and the sister? Um, so can I pull out, please? I'm sorry, I can only pick two. Um, so can I have one girl and two boys? Thank you. Come down. And you're going to be the, the brother and sister. So, what's your name? Biddy. Max. And Max, Biddy and Max. You're going to walk along the beach in a moment and you're going to find that turtle and then I'll, I'll whisper in your ear what you're about to say and you'll say it out loud, okay? Is that okay? Alright. So, they're walking along the beach and then they notice something. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, wow, look at that. That turtle looks really sick. That turtle looks really sick. Maybe we should call the rescue service. And that's what they did. They got out their phone, because one of them was old enough to have a phone, and they pressed the numbers. Can we do the sound effects? And they rang the rescue service that looks after turtles. Can you pretend to be ringing? And the phone rang at the other end. Hello. And they told, they explained what had happened. A turtle was sick. Oh, really? Okay, are you on the beach? Yes. Okay, I'll tell you what you need to do. Max, can you just stand up there and face your hands? That's it. What you need to do is get something like a towel or a shirt or something and wet it in the water and put that on the turtle. Can you do that? And we'll come straight away and get it. Yes. Okay, and that's what they did. So can you mind doing that? You might get a towel and wet it. This can be the ocean here. Can you, can you, can you mind doing that? You don't have to physically take your jumper off. <laughs> Australian seabird rescue people are the ones that also look after turtles. Yeah. So along they came. Hello! Are you the people that found the sick turtle? Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. You've done such a great job of looking after her. Um, wow, so I tell you what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to take this turtle back to our place and give her an operation because I, I, by the way she looks, I'd say she's probably swallowed plastic. So it'll probably take about three months. We'll have to look after this, this turtle in hospital for three months before she's well enough to come back out to sea. And when we do that, when we put her back out to sea, would you like to come and see her go back out to sea? Because we'll, we'll ring you then. We'll get your phone number and we'll ring you when that happens and then you can help wave her goodbye. All right? So that's what happened. The Australian Rescue Seabird Service. And we'll give you back your towel. Max, thank you so much for looking after the turtle. The Australian Rescue Service, we can hold her again. They took her back to the hospital and they did an operation. So this time, you're going to keep a hold of Shelley and I'm going to do the operation. And really, of course, the operation would involve putting the turtle to sleep and using little instruments to pull it out of the mouth. 
but we're going to do it like the great enormous turnip. We're going to pull it one, two, and on the third time we're going to get the plastic bag out. And you can help call the numbers, okay? So you hold Shelly and I'll hold this. Okay, one, two, three. And out came Russell. And Shelly felt so much better. But still, it did take her three months before she could go back out into the sea. And at that time, then the Australian Seabird Rescue Service, they took her back to the beach, they rang um, the two people, the two brother and sister who found her, they said, hello, hello, we found that that turtle is well again, would you like to come and wave her goodbye when she goes back to the sea? Yes. Okay, yes. so they came back to the beach and they put her back in the water. And it was really exciting, there was a huge crowd gathered, the newspapers came and took photos, and so they set her down to the ground and she swam out to sea. And as they went, they waved goodbye and they said, Good luck, Shelley. Can you wave good luck, Shelley? Good luck, Shelley. Don't eat any more plastic, will you? Don't eat any more plastic, will you? But of course, it's pretty tricky for a turtle to not eat plastic. So more important is for us to not put plastic in the sea. So, let's give our actors a big hand and we'll continue.